Welcome to Elite Six Think Tank, an open discussion group with business owners who share their knowledge, experience and skills. Good morning, welcome along to our Think Tank meeting. I'm glad you're all in attendance. We're trying some new recording gear today, so we maybe have a few sound fluctuations. Uh, so I'll try to get everyone in order. Good morning. How you doing? Um, nice to join us. Good. It's good. We've got an interesting meeting today. Started from last week's topic, which was mindset. Yes. And uh, from our talks on mindset, we actually got it right down to being uh, showing gratitude for what you do have. We had a nice example from young Elise, who said that when her mother rings her at work, she has to remember that she should be grateful that she has a mother to ring her and disturb her at work. All right. So our topic today is gratitude. Uh, I woke up late this morning and at seven o'clock and thought oh, I could have been rang her at seven thirty. That was quite a fun, fun, and, fun. And you weren't. Yeah, somebody did text me along the way, and then I had to learn how to text and drive. That's illegal. I used illegal. Surrey. It's now on a podcast as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. So how's everyone's week been? All right. Good. We've got Cam, who's new here, so be nice to him. Nice to meet you. How did you find out about us? Uh, through your website. Google and Google. Yeah. Yep, so we have uh, eight meetings in Elite Six, and at the end of the week, we have a combined meeting where people can come together and we've turned it into a podcast because I had an idea about six months ago. It's been quite good, so you can tune in and listen to our other podcasts if you like. Uh, each week, we pick a topic, and today was gratitude. I'm not really an expert on gratitude, but some people um, like focusing on it. So, has anyone got any good examples on? Gratitude and how it's been good for their business or good for themselves. David Clarkson. I got invested. Well, sorry, my company got invested by the investigated by the IRD. <laughs> That's not gratitude. Yeah. No, well, it was, <laughs> and, and so they, the IRD came in and said, well, "We will do. We're going to do an audit." So that's okay. So they came in and the audit, they were with, they did the audit and it was probably spread over about three weeks. And after the audit was finished, we got a clean bill of health. And the boss, and I still remember this, the boss said to me after that, and at that stage I'd worked for him for about 15 years. Well, well done, young man. Um, for doing such a good job, you know, we're very grateful. And I thought, that's brilliant. And what that did was, it was the first, as I say, it was the first time that he'd said to me, shown his appreciation in 15 years, but what it did do was it inspired me to continue working with the guy <laughs> for uh, some time long. That's great. Thank you, I did. Yeah, thanks <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just make this more fun then. We've got this coronavirus threat coming to us and the concussions off that isn't the virus, as I said earlier on, that's going to kill people, it's going to be the concussions of it. So, we can, is that the word? No, let's get technical, is it? Well, you might get it, that might be a better way to handle it. So, um, <laughs> So it's pretty sombre out there at the moment, you know, even though we're all small, medium-sized businesses, or well, most of us are, uh, you know, so how do you keep your mind, talking about mindset was really good for me last week, Dean had some really good points, so gratitude, I, I don't really get gratitude myself, I don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I love the fact that I've got a, I, don't, I just sort of, maybe I take it for granted, is that you wrong? Do that for granted, yeah, do you that's not, exactly right, yeah. are you not grateful for the fact that you're still you, alive? That you're still alive. No, you're not grateful for the fact that yes, you'll be finished at lunchtime today and you can go and do your bike ride or your run or whatever it is, you know, take apple for whatever it is you decide to do, <laughs> as opposed to working for somebody else where you have to turn up early in the morning and go home at 6 o'clock at night and have no flexibility. Well, now you put it like that. To be honest, uh, when I nearly did die, um, I did have a different perspective on life and every day I lived it like it was my last, but I do th I do actually reflect on that quite a lot. Helen Oaks. Yeah, I was going to say um, I do. I practice gratitude every morning. I'm like like what you were saying, grateful that I can um, 
have my own job, that I work for myself, that I can pick up my kids at a certain time or see my kids at a certain time, go for a run, go for a bike. So working for yourself is great. Great just, sport every day. Just to explain what the balls are for for Cam is we throw them at you if you talk too long. No, <laughs> that's not how they work. I mean, how do the balls work? If you get the ball, you talk. And I'm not supposed to be talking because I'm ballless. <laughs> so we, we, so we stop people over, overlapping each other. Uh, David Clarkson, I think it was, and then, yep. For me, gratitude happens in a lot of places, but I think one of, the, one of the things that we don't do enough of is we don't thank people, i.e. express our gratitude, we don't thank people. You know, and I, and I'm, I've been just as bad at this as anybody else. Um, you know, I find that sometimes you just, we just take people for granted and people will do random acts of kindness for us and we don't we don't say thank you. You know, and I think that's that's one of the things that I believe we should be we should be really open to showing our gratitude to people because that encourages them to do the things that we are grateful. So a simple chore of actually just saying thank you to other people can show the gratitude we have. Well, then, is it? Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yes, Mark. Ah, right. Uh, totally occur, uh, I concur with the esteemed Mr. Clarkson in terms of we often do not say thanks enough to people, and yet it's such an easy thing to say. Um, but sometimes you do hear it from others, and you know there's no depth behind it, and it's almost insincere. So it has to be a sincere thanks in terms of, uh, of that. But just to, touching on um, the, the gratitude part, and um, you know, I'm thankfully the morning when I wake up, you know, just waking up is good. Now, and, and my back history is that I've had four heart attacks in my time, and it was heart attack number four, which has which really changed my whole mind perspective. Because <laughs> <laughs> heart attack number one, two, three, you know, I was able to walk myself to the ambulance, and as I was going, I was telling number one, son, to mow the lawns, and number two, son, to do this and that. But the fourth event, you know, I was left lying on in a pool of my own sweat, uh, heart rate racing at 247 beats a minute, not doing anything, and um, I'm it was close to midnight and I'm looking out and I, I can see all my extremities starting to go purple. Um, so yeah, into, into ambulance which I couldn't climb and do it to be, you know, I was like a wet fish because it was just stuck in there. Um, the two ambulance people, they weren't fully trained paramedics and was out in uh, Rangiora at the time, they they had the foresight and, and uh, according to my wife, she could see the panic in their eyes because I was in a critical condition um, to ring for the advanced paramedic who intercepted us um, en route who had the thing parked up beside the road and it was at that point that I realised that this is my last day on earth you know? and um, then of course the old paddles came out and he said Mark I'm going to shock you and it was the full body Poof. And I was conscious, which is pretty pretty unusual here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I managed to say one loud four-letter word. <laughs> did it sound Tree. Weird? Oh no, it's not that. It, it did. It rhymed with truck. No. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't out. <laughs> 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 mm. So at that particular point in time, I knew I was going to lose. And so from that, from then, I've been eternally grateful for that. But more so is that I found I've become more empathetic to people. Maybe because you've been close to that point where you actually look at life from a different perspective. But having said that in one aspect, I'm totally intolerant of total prats. You know, so there's some things I feel... Tell me to take the ball of them, will you? Uh, it's really good. Yeah, I know. I've got the best ball. No, he has the ball. Rob. Yeah, I... I googled what gratitude meant because I was actually starting to <laughs> question myself because I thought am I thankful yeah I probably am but it's not something that 
is is at the forefront of my mind. It is not necessarily anything I verbalise. Um, so is is our perception of gratitude being not only thankful but actually saying it as well, or is it just that you act it? So some examples of showing your uh, gratitude. Have you seen it to yourself? Yep. Oh. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm sending posted mail, I'm sending myself posted. But no, it might be the person at the dairy. I mean, yes, they're branded, and yes, it's just an opportunity to put something out there, but it's not, you know, um, but yeah, it's just the person in the restaurant, the person that fixed the car. Yeah, so you say thank you. Uh, Nigel. I think back to Renee actually, she's in our group uh, 18 months ago, telling us this story of her life, which was quite horrific at the time. And she came through it with what she described as attitude of gratitude. And I've actually been quite inspired by that. So, so gratitude is just a sort of response. It actually becomes part of the way you respond, part of who you are in that respect. You don't respond with gratitude. Mm. All right. How's this go? Elise? No, she's helping. She's assisting me by pointing out you have a ball. I do have a ball. Are you grateful for that? I'm grateful. To me, gratitude—it—it it seems to be two ways. We do have a lot more like it's quite popular these days. The whole mindset gratitude thing it probably wasn't talked about five years ago. It might be something that you might meet a person five years ago that was always really gracious for stuff and was happy, and a lot of them had done what you said that had had near death experiences. Um, I don't think that you have to always be the person who has the near-death experience. I know, um, I know for myself, when I was looking after my grandfather with cancer, when he passed away, I was the only person in the room with him, and I was holding his hand, and that was a pretty massive life-changing moment for 20 years old me, <clears throat> after looking after him for four months. Um, it made me a lot more gracious and positive, because and in a way it kind of stopped me being, I know this sounds really weird, but scared of death because it was like a witness it. I don't know, it was really weird. But I think people need to be more positive. People, these days we have a lot more stress, we have a lot more uh, things going on in your life. It's not like we kind of spoke about last week. It's such a driven, we're always running from this to that to this to that. And we're so high paced that we don't slow down and smell the roses. But as I said to my husband, also smell the dog shit. It's not all roses. Um, but being more gracious, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. So you, by just saying thank you to someone, they might be on the edge of something that's, you know, they might be on the edge of doing something terrible like taking their own life because of what's happened to them that day. And just one small, thing that takes one person to turn to them could be that life changing moment. Thank you. Nick. I was just going to say um, um, gratitude is, you know, it's like a form of respect. You actually, you know, like somebody's helping you out with something that you possibly can't do. You actually respect, you actually respect that person for the, for the help they have um, mm. um, given you. Mm. And you want to be positive to them and say, you know, thanks for helping me. Mm. Yeah. I got a text from somebody at 11.30 last night saying they weren't in a good space. So you're sitting there and you're thinking, what do you do with that? Like, what happens if you wake up and that person's not here anymore and you didn't react? And then you think, how personal can I get? Because I don't know them that well. Uh, so then yeah, I did... They text you, they wanted your report. Yeah. Yeah. You someone if you but you don't get texts from people at 11 o'clock at night basically um, saying thank you for being my friend. That sort of one year, and it was kind of like, yeah, and then I said, look, so I wrote back and I said, look, um, 
talk, tell me, I want to know. Don't wait until you see me to tell me what, what the issue is, let's talk. And an hour and a half later I got a phone call, 12.30 at night. And, um, and they just said they've had a horrific day and this blah 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 blah. But I thought, oh, they're probably regretting maybe, I don't know, they called me that late or whatever. But it was actually quite a privilege to actually get that phone call because it's thinking, I'm in that position where I could force somebody to talk to me and that was great, you know, but then I'm thinking I'm so glad I did because you don't know where that person's at, you know. And, you, and also most, most people would probably assume that this person had their shit together all the time because they're, they're, they're in sales and you just think it's like a real estate agent, I don't know how they do it, <laughs> you know, or a car, car salesman or insurance guy, gosh. Jesus. <laughs> um, not yet, um, but yeah, I, I know where they are and what they're doing, so yeah. But it's strange, isn't it? Yeah. But sometimes, yeah, it's just nice to know that you've got, I mean, oh, this is what we're doing here, this is what I believe Elite Six is all about, is showing welfare on other people. Don't think you don't have the right to ring up somebody or to drop in and say they're okay. So you should be grateful that they rang you. Absolutely. And confided yeah. in you. And the hand on my heart. Yeah. Well, well, it's um, it's what I, you know, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's a real privilege. So yeah. But yes, Rob Woolley. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna flip this around to if you're on the receiving end of non gratitude. Oh, good. So I, I spent a lot of time a few weeks ago on a project, and I sent it in and the feedback was horrific. So there was no uh, acknowledgement of the work done. There was no acknowledgement of anything at all. There was just straight criticism and lots of it. Bing, 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 bing. And I, I looked at that in two ways. The first thing is that you question yourself and how bad you had done. But because my uh, esteem or experience in this is quite strong, I thought, well, I'm not going to say I did a great job, but I know I did a fair job. My second thing is to look at the person sending it. <laughs> and if I had been really, and I'm not too sure what the word of it is, sometimes I get stuff like that and I think, wow how bad is your day um, in this case I thought I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore and that's where I am now because I think I respect myself enough to not need to expose myself to that but the flow on effect for me is that I, I have come back to reminding myself every time that I send an email I start off saying um, a nice line at the start and I end on a nice line and I'm reminding myself of of I, I don't communicate like that and the important thing is is that I, I don't want to um, learn to communicate someone else's way when I'm quite happy with how I communicate myself so yeah you know like there is an effect sometimes which is quite interesting though because if you sent me an email and it was a shit sandwich I just read through it and go, why did you waste your fucking time writing that first sentence? Because I know you don't mean it, because what you want to say is the bit in the middle. But not everyone's like you. A lot of people I know, like it. Thank God for the word. Thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite good. So your point, back, going back to Mr. Woolley here, was really um, people that don't show gratitude, do you show them gratitude back? <laughs> or how do you counteract negativeness? Is that what we're talking about? I'm a bit flat today, I shouldn't be doing this meeting. Yeah, you can't afford to buy into that negativity. Yeah, Some yeah. people will yeah. react to it potentially in a negative way, which can only end badly. Hmm. So you either you ignore, or you just do a, a quick, firm statement back and then disengage. Thank you for your uh, feedback. Yeah. I will take that on board. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote back to somebody and said that they uh, because of the inconvenience they experience with the order that they're going into a prize draw for a cruise on the Diamond <laughs> Princess because there's just <laughs> four seats have just become available and I said so I hope you don't mind waiting for your $20 product a little bit longer 
That wasn't very All nice. Seats was have been hand sanitised. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really do that. I think bringing it back to where we were last week and talking about mindset and things, mm. it, we were talking about how shit business can be and how we get weighed down by anything, and it was more about yeah, why are we great? Why are we in business for ourselves? Why? What is the gratitude behind that? And you know. We need to remember to look back and think, okay, my day's been crap, but this has happened. And remembering those little mm. things and all the little things leading up to the big things. So I just wanted to bring it back yeah. to business. Maybe, maybe gratitude is natural. I mean, for me, I love life. Uh, and I, I wake up with excitement. And I love planning and getting stuff done. Really not selling that right now, Danny. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I know, yeah, I know. That's, thanks for that. That's, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, all right, David Clarkson, my wise man. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say that, and going on from what Jaron said, and I agree with you 100%. I think one of the things about it is here's the thing that when things are going well for us, we a lot of the time we just don't stop and say, hey, things are going well. You know, I'm really pleased that things are things are going well and we only start recognizing the things that went when well. things turn pear-shaped. Well, like, everything's going well, what's going to go wrong this afternoon? It's, well, it's just, just even take it back to our bodies. You know, we take our bodies, a lot, a lot of us take our bodies for granted and it's not until something happens to us, we have the heart attack or even pull a muscle or something or other like that and you say to yourself, you know, Really, I should be pretty grateful that I'm, that I'm as well as I am. Yeah, so you and you know, when this comes right, I'm going to, going to appreciate it. It's, it's a really good topic, actually. Life can be off like that. And once it's gone, uh, you're a long time dead. So, you know, what's the other problem? Yeah. Well, you'd be dead, so it wouldn't be your problem, it'd be everybody else, yeah, really. Yeah. Sorry. Darling. Attitude. <laughs> you have a the old nugget attitude of gratitude it does make you a happier person because I never really practice gratitude because you do call it a practice if you have it in your mind to always be grateful for things so now I try and always be grateful and as Elise says her mum rings her and it might interrupt your day but when you don't have a mother and my mother passed away when I just had my son who was three months old it was a really really hard time so now I am grateful I had my mum for that long, but I don't have my mum now. So it's like, I think you've, if you have that attitude of always being grateful for what you have, not what you don't have, then um, you, you definitely are a happier person. I yeah. practice gratitude every day, even for really little things. You can have my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Nick? Uh, yeah, well, I was just, well, so from my perspective, you know, um, before my um, wife got sick, I was all at work, just working as much as I could. And my wife got sick, um, so on um, dialysis, so pretty major. And but I still kept working for a year and just totally burnt myself out. And you know now I'm coming back to my own business and being positive to myself and actually working for myself so that I don't so that I don't burn out. I can be done by lunchtime and then I can do my own stuff. Mm. So that's a, that's a real shift. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like we've all done the 16 hour days, yeah, wake up dead. Chasing mm. that one more dollar. But it sometimes yeah. takes a, a trigger event though. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So what about financially when you do something like that? Isn't that the concern that you're not going to have enough monies to survive? Yeah, but then you realise it's not all about money and that if that means taking a weekend in Kaikoura rather than a weekend in Melbourne, well, be grateful for the weekend in Kaikoura. Mate, Wollstone would be nice. Yay. Yeah. Nice places in Wollstone to stay. I go as far back as be grateful you've got a house when you own it or not. You're yeah. in a house as homeless people. Wow. You know. yeah. No, I don't. I go that far. No, no, I'm thinking, yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember walking around the streets in India. Yeah. yeah. And I That's walked right. in that intersection. I talked about 25 people live on the intersection and they sell balloons. But they're the happiest. Yeah. people that you'd meet and they get humour and they laugh and they you know they want to share what they have that 
the uh, first time I went to India, they gave this guy comes up and gives me his kid to hold, and I thought, yeah, what do I do with this thing? And he goes, this is my son, and I go, I don't know you. Yeah, I just just met you, and you show me your son, and I'm holding your son, and I'm you hand it back, but um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so when, when I travel those third world countries, you, you actually notice that there's um, more gratitude for what you do have. Yeah. Material assets, yeah. and those sort of things, I mean, what's your most prized possession? You know, what is it? Well, it's easy to get caught up in what you don't have, and we all go, oh, I wish I had one of these, I wish I had one of these, instead of being grateful for, I have this, and I have this. It's about simple pleasure, yeah, though. And I was right. the same in, in Vietnam. The experience I had there, and you have people out and around on the streets, and they're dirt poor, and yet they all had smiles on their faces. Mm. Um, is it uh, the most prized position for me would be relationships? You know, and you think about the power of uh, you know having a relationship with anybody, and they obviously I've always talked about relationships. They don't just come willy nilly, but then you meet people who don't know how to maintain relationships, well, or you get blown away, and they are after the money. The power of <laughs> relationships it is a known fact that loneliness causes um, premature death. So you know, if we don't have that community around us, it. It is, yeah. If you don't have that community around you, and you know, you hear a lot of old people and living by themselves, and yeah. they and all like really die. Don't want, and yeah, it's also a trigger for um, depression. For depression yeah. and um, dementia. Yeah. Being, yeah. being low, living yeah. on on your own. Is yeah. Yeah, it's a big. <coughs> There's my, a really. My grandfather is 96, and he has well. lived by himself since the 70s. But does he have a good community around him? That's Not so different. much anymore because yeah. they're all dying. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Um, and he doesn't have any family in Nelson. Yeah. But you can't get him out of Nelson. But is he in clubs or does he have a few? Well, he's still got his yeah. driver's license. Yeah. Jesus. So he must get out and about. That might be exciting for him. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting yeah. for him. And the other people on the road, I'm sure. But it's like, and my grandmother lives by herself. My, yeah. On the other side of the yeah. family, my dad's mum, she's 94 and wow. she lives by herself mm. in a four bedroom. I think home. if they live by themselves, but they have a good community yeah. around yeah. them. Yeah, grandma does. Yeah. Mm. So, um, um, we've just looked at the board. And but yeah, I was just going to yeah. say if you look Thanks. at the board, um, which those on the podcast won't be able to see. Um, but there's so many other things to gratitude, like the thankfulness, gratefulness, uh, emotions, giving, thankfulness. And I mean, it means a lot for business. Like in my business, we don't have a sales team, we have a relationship building team. Because I do not allow any of our team to talk about sales. Um, because I don't like sales, and I don't like the word sales, and I don't like salesmen. No, no offense to any salesmen here. So. Um, but it's about, for me, it's about them building relationships, not just with the clients that they're helping, but also with the people that we're working with in the banks as well. Um, because if you can build a relationship with people, it makes yeah. the whole process easier, it makes a longer, a, a, like a better bond with that person. It creates not just a, I'm going to get you into a house and goodbye, I'm on to the next person. You're not a number, you're a person, you're a... You're a, it's a whole package. Mm. So. so relationship building techniques. One I've been doing lately is quite hard case. I said uh, talking to a stranger once a day is a goal. Um, we went to a cafe with Rob actually on Tuesday called uh, Porter Shed. It's on Lincoln Road. And they have um, a table. And they, you can sit at the, they tell you whereabouts you're sitting. If it's full, they say, oh, we share tables here. So you turn up and there's somebody else sitting there, whatever. And you sit there and go, oh, how are you doing? A big technique is just putting your hand out and say, I'm Danny. Don't do that. Oh, do you fist pump them in the face? No, you can't shake hands at the feet. Shake hands at the feet. My dog does that. <laughs> yeah, but it's just something simple, sharing a uh, table with somebody. Uh, and also, if you go to a party and there's somebody sitting there in the corner, like a, a corner hugger, what do you call those, Dave? That's what Dave used to be, now look at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I agree, loneliness is a killer. Sorry? Yeah. Wallflower. Wallflower? Wallflower. Yes, wallflower. It's on that side. Oh, yes. That's a bit old, that one, isn't it? Yeah. Who are you calling out? Okay, so people's experience with gratitude is we didn't get anyone really saying they stand up every morning at 6 a.m., look in the mirror, and say, I love my 
Oh, and gratitude. Nice. Uh, no. Is that the old version of it? So what's a modern version of gratitude? Saying great. thank you, I love that. You can journal, you can say it in your head, say it out loud, say it in a mirror. But I think as long as you voice it somehow or write it down, Social media is a good one. What about comments on Facebook that are negative? Can you help put positive spins on things? No, I yeah. think keep off social media yeah. Yeah. because but it the, brings you down. The key yeah. thing is that it's sincerely stated and it's part of you. Yes. Mm. yes. Some yeah. people need to reinforce it daily. Well, yeah. I certainly don't. Yeah. We, mm. we talk every night when we go to bed, we talk about like three or four things that we really like the best parts of our day. Yeah, we're going to I sleep. think that's really important. Yeah. Oh, now celebrating uh, life and celebrating our successes, that's and gratitude, isn't it? Yeah, it's so, gratitude. Yeah. But yeah. things that yeah. went well or things yeah. that I enjoyed, even if it was just like... I've got an example. Well, Fiona at the moment is looking for a container. Yeah. Container yeah. full of chocolate on the other side of the world. And so uh, that now? must be quite it's negative. It's Antwerp now. Oh, it's yeah. moved. Oh, so it's moved. Oh, oh. that's a relief. Yeah. Yeah. Belgium. 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 Yeah. It hasn't got far then. No. Oh, oh. it's travelled across Europe. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Here, it's supposed to be here. As long as it's not via the States. Yeah. Or, Ge or Germany at the moment. I heard that's about to close or Italy. Was it, where did it start? It started in Belgium. It's gone down to France and then it's gone back up to Belgium. Oh. <coughs> but so, I am yeah. for, for, my, yes, for my agent, actually, the guy that is my in-between man, between the factories and me, um, he's doing his utmost to actually get it moved. He came back to me and said, we can air freight it, because nobody's on the plane, so the plane's are empty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've got to be thankful of coronavirus <laughs> for uh, emptying the planes and making freight cheap. Mm -hmm. wow. So that could be an option. We now could, there uh, must we could air freight it out here and be here in a couple of days. Pardon? Who has to pay for the freight, though? I would have to pay for the There is also a point that if it... But it would be here, and I would yeah. have stock, and I would be great. You'd have an income. Yes. <laughs> But is, but is there a point though that if it got stuck in Antwerp for the next five six weeks, where the actual product could ruin and no, because happen? it's plugged. It's in a reefer container, which is a chill container, so it's plugged in and it's kept seven degrees. Fourteen, roughly. Oops, sorry about that. Don't <laughs> the fridge. Goes um, right, doesn't it? Because yeah. hasn't um, the state stopped all flights from Europe? Yeah. Yes. Travel yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Is it from mm. the no, Friday yeah. today? No, it as of, as of, into as of tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Every reaction has a reaction. I love that saying. Rob. Oh, oh, hello. We've got a little oh. person joining our podcast. That's <laughs> great. Hello. <laughs> that was cool. It's just like India. <laughs> uh, a story I heard years ago. Short um, story, isn't it? it? I'll make it short if you shut up. Thank you. <laughs> Shorter now, that, in time. There was a coup in Fiji, and and every everybody made out like the Fijians were n not grateful for what had happened in their country. And then there was a guy who who said, "I'll tell you how, how that coup happened." He said the Fijians lived in Fiji and were quite happy. <laughs> the English went to Fiji and saw an opportunity to make money. But the Fijians didn't want to work, and they thought that the Fijians were ungrateful. And so they imported the Indian labor force, <coughs> and the Fijians allowed that to happen. Right? But the Indians um, came and were supposed to have been taken home <laughs> after they completed the labor by the English when the English left. But they didn't do it. And, and then the Indians, because they were quite a large you know, like proportion of the population, wanted some a political power and they eventually ended up in power. And the Fijians eventually decided to take the power back. And what this guy was saying is that the assumption was is that if we make the Fijians money, they'll be grateful. <laughs> the Fijians were quite grateful not having money, not even needing money, but going and growing what they needed, or harvesting what they needed, or catching what they needed. Because that's how, how they live, and they were grateful for their life how it is. So perhaps one aspect of gratitude is don't do something and assume that someone's going to be grateful that you did it. Ooh. So it's personal gratitude, business gratitude? Um, allowing... Like, or, yeah. 
Um, acknowledging that some people are grateful for well, the things they don't have or, or everything they do have. I was in Sri Lanka and I took a photo of a guy who would have been about 200 metres away from me. He had a sickle and he's in a perfect, got my camera out, took a photo and he looked out and saw me and he came running towards me. <laughs> and I thought, ah, oh, he's probably showing his gratitude towards me taking <laughs> this photo. And then he tried to hit me with a sickle. And the, and the camera goes, get in the car, get in the car. And I'm going, oh, there's no gratitude there, mate. Yeah, that was quite interesting. But uh, yeah, he was, yeah. Well, it's what, what I did notice when I travelled India. And then I went to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka looked nicer. The, the kids were all wearing nice white uniforms to school, and, and I thought they got a better lifestyle here. But they were more well, money they hungry. They angry sickle men, though, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, but they were uh, they were poorer. They couldn't see their poorness because they had big, nice, happy smiles. But in India, they were more after the money and the greed of money. So yeah, that's one thing you do see. Sorry, um, Fiona. Um, I was just going to say that I think people's Gratitude is is in different tiers. Like people can be great, you know, grateful, like you're saying. Those poor people are grateful for what they have, whereas mm. some people are grateful because they've got lots of stuff and lots of money or whatever. So you know, your mm. your level of gratitude for different reasons is different. I think contentment is coming out of my being content. Yeah. So I'm grateful. I mean, I don't have, you know, I don't earn a huge amount of money, but I'm grateful for what I have, and I have an amazing family and my kids and I've got a beautiful house and you know I'm grateful for what I have at this point so it's mm. not actually and I don't need I mean yes it'd be great to have mm. money and be everything else but you know you've got to kind of look at what you have and be grateful on different I think people are different it's that yeah. level of contentment yeah. wherever yeah. you are I think it's a next week's topic we're grateful for what you have thing. and we are all you know there are people <laughs> so when are, when are you going to be happy I'm okay. are they grateful they are grateful that have Mental challenge. No, they always want more. Yeah. I'll always. be happy so when. You know, and it's to do people. with it's to do with your brain getting to a level of um, what it, like contentment of that point, but it mm. but it needs more to carry on. If you know what I mean. Yeah. You get. So I can't think of the word. It's not apathetic, but you get to that point where you get bored with what you got and you yeah. want more. Mm. And not being influenced by the outside yeah. world as well. And it's for money and stuff. Because you look at those um, rich celebrities around the world who end up topping themselves. They've yeah. got everything, yes. money, no, choices yeah. and bits and pieces. They, yes, I know. I, that's, I, I like, agree. That's, yeah. that's the point I'm making is that they've lost themselves in the celebrity thing, yeah. what's been thrust and upon them. They take copious amounts of drugs. Yeah. You're trying to deal with Try to deal with it, but it... Just now we've got a meaty topic. We've got a good topic now, guys. This is much better. Contentment. <laughs> Rich people are looking happy. They're not. They're living a veneer life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so uh, what, are we living a real life? No, no, but it's no, not no. been influenced by other people's opinions and what you should have. I would have said here before, years ago, I had a weak old car and somebody said to me, hey, when your business starts making money, you can have an Audi. And I was just like, oh, what makes you think I need an Audi? My You've obviously never very driven very an Audi, <laughs> but yeah, I get you. I think you had a car yeah. that's a week old. Well, yeah. You exactly. bourgeois capitalist. Well, you're right. Right. <laughs> I'll replace that with the bad kind of car that's a week old. I like new cars and I hate driving the loan cars they give you when you Why crash not? them up. Yeah. <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, Rob. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna throw out the gambler's mentality. Uh, you know, as you know, like a horse no, trainer from the past. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the races and you have a bet and and you lead the races and you've won twenty bucks, you're ecstatic until you go to the races next time. All right. And then to get that same level of buzz, you need to win thirty dollars. And it gets to the point where I went to the casino a few years with a friend who won a, a jackpot on Caribbean stud poker. So you get. 10% of the pool, which came to 25k, and he wasn't wasn't excited or anything. <laughs> and my friend and I were looking at right, our other friend, and it was a moment of realization that this man has lost a serious amount of money. If you're in a casino, you've won 25,000, and you're not happy because that every gambler reads that. And I think you can even apply it to to uh, romance. 
Right? You meet a lady that, you know, like, or a guy that you are really attracted to, and maybe you thought that you would never meet or attract anybody like that, and it's fantastic, but each week, after a while, it starts to wear off because if you've achieved that height of excitement, and maybe to get that same height of excitement, you either need to go away from them and come back, or you need to meet the next person who's a little bit... No, oh, no, no, you're full of shit. That's no good. Oh, you see, I'll tell you a good example. We, when, I, um, used to, when I, run, I used to run my social clubs, right? We used to get a lot of people going there for dating. And they'd turn up and they'd go straight for the, the best looking lady and I'd see it and they got the peacocks and would get the, the lady and they'd fall for it and then two weeks later they both wouldn't turn up and all this sort of stuff. But I said, uh, don't judge somebody for five times when you come to our, our events and talk to everybody equally and don't judge them on looks and then the looks disappear and I think that's the point you, you were making you were just going for a better looking woman every well, time. I, uh, yeah. no, well I wasn't even talking about myself <laughs> I, I was just actually talking about this sensation you know because it may be looks it may be personality it may be you know, like the magnetism or whatever but right, if you're near that a long time over and over and over it, all right, it kind of wears off and you don't see it because you become well, it wears off complacent, if you're not grateful, mm. and you become complacent. So, yeah. about, yeah. about three minutes ago, we talked about um, what was it? There was a couple of things we talked about: uh, being veneer, being real, people with money looking like they're happy and they're not. So, where did that? You've also that? got people that don't have money and still aren't happy. Yeah, I think people, a lot of wealthy people, would be quite lonely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. And there's a there's a bit of having money. There's that there's sort of the stat, status of keeping mm -hmm. up with other people that have money. Yep. Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. We talked about it the other day when we were going to win the 50 million. Uh, I said to Helen, I probably wouldn't tell her. She said, Would you tell me? And I said, No, I don't want to tell anybody I had money if I did, because I don't want people to think it's all right for them. Yeah. You're just getting yeah. a call from Acapulco. Yeah. 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 Or something. Yeah. But isn't it? Yeah, so that was owner that people... Have you seen Danny? Yeah. Yeah. Danny's come home with a new kid. But wouldn't it be easier to live life without people prejudging you by your wealth or, uh, well, you know, well, your... People prejudge well, you on everything. Yeah, so it's right. not only the money. Yeah. No. Oh, I'm going to pick on Elise because yes. I, I know you. Yeah. And I know you're, you seem always positive. And I'm always positive. Though, I man. know, but um, I mean, I know you have a real heart, and you've had things that go on in life and all that sort of stuff. So how do you main? I mean, you can't just put up a. You must be genuinely have gratitude because you can't just put up a veneer of I'm a happy person because when you get home you fall apart. But you you continuously work at your gratitude, where your positiveness. Um, I'm a pretty positive person in the best of times, but no, sometimes I definitely put a veneer up, and when I'm especially if I'm having a bad day. And I put on the, my life is fabulous, hi, at least maximum, we're going to get this done. Mm. And then I get out of there and I'm like, fuck my life. <laughs> um, but that's because, like, I'm real with most people and a lot of people know I've got a lot of shit that goes on in my life. Um, that's got nothing to do with work, but work makes me happy. Mm. And I love what I do and I love my team and my family so I like try to keep those different aspects that's going that's like your sanctuary yeah, yeah it's really. like my I've got my shitty part not my shitty part of my life it's not shitty it's just complex yes. mm. okay it's shitty, shitty. <laughs> I'm like the person that people have a bad day and then they come and talk to me and they leave and go fuck I've got a good life like, I'm not like her mm. but the thing is is you've got to like my work is what I can control so if I can control the work and I can get through all of that shit, it makes it makes me happy and it gives me that control and stuff that I can't. Mm. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going through, I've got absolutely no control over. Mm. It costs me a lot of money, it costs me a lot of emotional power, it like costs me, it's physically, emotionally and financially draining, but I actually can't control any of it. Doesn't mean I don't care about it, I wish I could not care about it, mm. but when it comes to my job and my friends and my family, I have to be grateful for that shit. I, I you gotta... a lot in your chemicals in your body as well, that if you mm. are smiling and you're giggling, even if it is false, it releases chemicals mm. that mm. make you smile more. 
Like I think sometimes you're along. Putting on the radio and getting a good song and having a little bit of it. Mm. Oh, okay. We get it away. Come on, we've got this. Mm. But it's still <laughs> life. Yes. So. My, my little dog bumps into something and he shakes it off. Yeah. And I look at that and I think that's the way of doing it. You might have heard his paw, but he shakes it off like it's going to make a difference. But it must be something so psychological. Up when I was up the ski field road a couple of weeks ago and I got my flat tire at the very top and you know, it couldn't get going, I had to get a tow truck and pay $450 for a tire. It was kind of like for me, it was just I couldn't do anything about it, so I might as well enjoy it. But then other people would get into that situation. So my mate was laughing at me about my flat tire and my wee Suzuki and yeah. not having a spare tire and I got all, all this advice compiling what I should have done and how I could have done it and I go, huh. Anyway, my mate, he got a, he's a, uh, he works on farms and he drove onto a farm the other day and he thought, oh, that feels a bit bumpy. He got two flat tires, didn't he? And I remember saying to him, I said, oh, so how did you enjoy the process of getting yourself out of that? And he said, I just had to go with the flow. And I, I thought that was quite funny because he could, you know, I think that sometimes we just have to go with the flow. I mean, if we go back to the coronavirus thing, um, what really can we do about it? Oh, it is what it is. Your attitude for the um, flat tyre goes back to mindset. You had a positive mindset, even though you got a flat tyre. Yeah. And I did notice you weren't grumpy the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you were actually fine. Well, the funny thing yeah. is, the bonus side of it is when we're out the tow truck driver, a tow truck driver, and he said, "Take your time, enjoy the mountain, and let me know when you want to be picked up." And I thought, oh, oh cool, Edinburgh. and I thought, how cool. So I've got two hours to go up the mountain and get vertigo on the, on the yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's a different but, story. Yeah. But yeah. you also made, did you put him in your contacts? Because you said he was talking to you about something. You would not believe yeah. this guy taking me down the mountain and, and he lives in Medford. So I asked him, that, and this is relationship building, he's a tow truck driver. So I said, oh, you live here? Have you got kids? I asked those questions. And he said, yeah, I've got two kids. I said, oh, it must be nice bringing up your kids in this part of the world. And he said, well, one of them's up there in the, doing mountain biking today, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and then I started talking about how I used to live in Rangura. And then he said something. Um, I said, oh, do you do small board target shooting? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I do. And I said, oh, and then somehow I figured out he's in the fire brigade. Then we just knew he's a volunteer fire brigade. And then we, by the time we got down this mountain, we sort of knew each other really good. We had a real good handshake. It was a real good, you know, it was just a conversation. Uh, but he knew lots of people I knew, and he's just a tow truck driver, you know. But he wasn't just a tow truck driver. He's a, he's a dad, and he brought up his kids the way he wanted to, and he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, going down the I hate commercialism, but you know, he's bringing up his kids like we're so lucky here, you know. And his dad took us down. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So his, his father came pick because there's three of us in the cab, I wanted to squeeze in with Helen, it would have been good, but she didn't really have to. And then they brought his dad up the mountain to pick our passengers up. And then we got, you had a conversation with his dad. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. So it has been great, great gratitude. Sorry guys, I'm waffling a bit. You waffle a bit. Oh, you just remind me of a story. Oh um, my God. <laughs> uh, We've got two minutes. It's a really bad day, right? But I wrote down, I wrote down presence and mindfulness. So I was having this really bad day and, and, and you know, there's all these really annoying people around talking about gratitude and mindfulness and being present and in the moment and stuff, right? And so I'm driving to the courier and I'm I'm in the moment so I wind the window down and the sun's coming in and I turn the radio off because yeah, I just want to embrace it, I don't want any distractions, I just want to feel it. So I go to the courier and there's two hitchhikers on the side of the road. And I pick them up and they get in the car. And I said, you know, where are you going? Uh, we want to go south. And I said, well, what I'll do, I'll take you down onto the main south road and I'll drop you off and somebody is going to pick you up. So I drive down the main south road just past Hornby and I actually realised there's actually nowhere really to pull off the side of the road here. But there's like this, this slant there. So I pulled on the slant and then I realised this, this slant is a big slant. So I didn't go too far off, but I'm being present. And I said, you yeah, know, I'll drop you off here. And the girl opens the door, truck comes through, whack! And I thought, right at that moment, I thought, oh my God, she just did. What had actually happened, she hadn't actually got out. It had taken my door, bent it round, glass showered into the back of my head. And I thought, whoa. And I get out, now the girl is beside herself. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh my god, I've just destroyed this guy's car. And I go up to her and I give her a hug because I'm present. <laughs> right? 
And she said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I said, no, no, hey, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It happens. All right. And I just get her bags out. And she said, oh, you know what? I've got to do something. I've got to do something. And I said, there's nothing you have to do. Everything's cool. I said, I'm not too sure I'm going to shut that door. <laughs> Been around like that. And we had like a crash door. We had to a tickle at it. But yeah, I, I had gone into that situation. I came out of a prison the next day. I thought, oh my bloody door. But, <laughs> but I got a, yeah. Yeah, I got a nice story because I had my car was parked on the side of the road. Christmas time got totaled, everything. Uh, big fight with the insurance company, blah, blah, blah. And at the very end of it, I added up how much money I was actually out of pocket. And so I went back to the company who caused it. And just yesterday, they just said they were, um, they were pay it. I thought, great. You know, but it was like every situation. And the, the guy that crashed into the car was 17 years of age, and he totaled it, and he, whatever, ever. But everyone was really calm. The only person that wasn't really calm was the guy that just paid my bill because he was trying to deal with the situation and taken the, all the big accident. And there's this guy that's theoretically, I should be the, the one that's jumping up and down the most. I was the most relaxed there, so relaxed. My lips were dragging Relax on the ground. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 17 year old. They had so much stress in his life, and I'm going, oh my god. Um, all right, so anyway, we're actually um, nearly out of time. So can I ask you uh, some quick takeaways? No stories, not pointed at you, Rob. But um, anyone got any takeaways from today? Did we get anything out of this? Well, I'm just grateful that we had the conversation. Yeah. Oh, that's very simple. Yeah. My Mac. I'm grateful I don't need to buy 36 rolls of toilet paper. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, as I said last week, they, um, don't they're in Auckland. Return them because they don't refund, apparently. Oh, no. Especially <laughs> slightly used. Just putting that in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, uh, the police, uh, somebody stole a pallet load of toilet paper from Auckland, would you believe, and the police got nothing to go on. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, next week's topic, um, uh, there was a word I used before. Um, <laughs> Con I content, that, being content. Does that sound like a good thing? Contentment? No. no. Oh, no, well, no, give no, me no, one. It's like being content, just bleh. Yeah. Is it's it? like bleh. Can we it's change? It's almost <laughs> like we've gone from the mindset to gratitude and we've gone, we've Damn. covered just about no, all no, of those. There were yeah. new topic completely different yeah. from all this shit. All right. We'll yeah. talk about, rela uh, no, not relationships, no. love no. lives. No, not religion either. No. Intimacy? No. Se sexual not. experiences? No. Uh, okay. Getting um, further down the sure, track, Danny, rather than that. Yeah. Alright. How about... Something businessy? Um, yeah. Maybe. Business well, where's Jean really while we're here? Um, come on, T. Business advice? Tips advice? How to deal with grumpy customers. Grumpy customers? Oh, that's going to be... Oh, that's Bit that's negative. That one. Yeah. Delete. Delete. Bit negative. Let's be grateful we have customers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about um, health, uh, health? Health. Maintaining no. a healthy lifestyle? No. No. Drugs? Drugs of choice? No. no. Drugs of choice. No. no. Right. What about gambling addictions? No. No. How about um, a problem maintaining a solution? your customer base? Maintain, maintain. Retention. Yeah, retention. Retention. Customer retention. Retention. I have to look up what that word yeah. means. Retention means keeping clients. Yes. Yeah. Retention. Yeah. Oh. Even when you have no oh. stock. Oh, oh. Have actually, no stock. actually, that's actually quite good. Um, Even when you've got that stock. This week we've had an unusual one where I've had about five or six conversations with businesses who are putting their prices up. Uh, and uh, because they're, they're thinking that they need to consolidate, so that's a natural thing that a lot of people have done is put the price up, thinking they'll just put the price up and it all add up at the end, have less customers, more money. But then now with the, was it contention? Retention. 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 Keeping those clients yeah. is, is a trick as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So yeah. client retention. I like that. I feel that. like that's a good one for next week because it right. can kind of go in lots of different avenues, but it's not just all the... Yeah. Not that I'm saying gratitude and positive mindsets aren't great, but that's all kind of like fluffy stuff. We need some solid... Retention, I remember that. Now, uh, you might have noticed I've got some new speakers and recording here. If you guys did actually tune into the podcast, have a listen to yourself, you'll see this, how the sound works. Uh, it's actually looking like we've recorded it quite well. Um, but I anyway, I'm trying to get better sound because it's getting a bit echoey. And people were saying, I can't hear it very well, but it's very... Um, very complicated. So it takes me a while to set this up. If you don't know, I come from Rangura on a Friday morning. That's why I was rushing today. All right. Hey, thank you very much. I will push end soon. Not now. Probably in a minute. How about now? About now. Definitely now. Now? Yeah. Okay, we're going to say when the mic's off. Thanks, Danny. Lots. Oh. Thanks, Danny. Great. Thanks, Danny. Great.
Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. If you're going to get anything from this podcast, make sure you thank people for doing random acts of kindness. Kindness. Can we push stop now? Yes.